Eve Trophy, female variant of the Oscar statuette, goes to English captain Mrs Crosby at the latest of the England-Scotland sports contests. And this is how it was done at the international bowls match at Glasgow's Bella Houston Club. An all-feminine day, and in the audience was at least one dumb blonde. England won by 118 points to 113, and Britain has a new set of bowling queens. Walking on a carpet of rushes, members of the ancient open-air parliament of the Isle of Man proceed to Tinwald Hill. Among this year's new laws, believe it or not, is one fixing income tax at two shillings in the pound. Tradition dies hard at the Manx Tinwald. To drive away evil spirits, officials wear a sprig of wort, and coroners still receive their staves of office at one of Britain's oldest ceremonies. The international flag of the Red Cross flies at Oxford, where Lord Woolton greets Basil O'Connor, the society's chairman. Lady Limerick, the Duchess of Marlborough and Mrs Bryant were there to join in Britain's welcome to the world delegates, among them Dr Max Hubert, Swiss president of this International League of Mercy. Symbolising the spirit of the occasion is this extract from Mr O'Connor's speech. In any great emergency or crusade, the common people usually are a mile out in front of their governments. In my own country, they proved this before Pearl Harbor, when in great majority they demanded the abandonment of our traditional isolationism. They proved it again in their eagerness announced in every medium of public expression open to them to make personal sacrifices to aid the distressed populations of Europe and Asia while those officially charged with bringing relief to three million refugees and displaced persons in Europe alone were still debating and passing resolutions on the relative merits of various means suggested to bring about that relief. Starving people can't eat resolutions.